we have seven incredible things you can do with your Mac right now. I'm guessing you didn't know about these. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So here we go again with seven incredible things you can do with your Mac that I'm guessing you don't know all of these for sure. Now the word incredible, I had to fluff it up a little bit so don't attack me, but I think there's a couple in here that you won't know about. So sit back and relax and just watch all seven in the comments. Tell me if you knew all of these or which ones you didn't know. Just I'm just always curious on it. So without further ado, let's get into the video right now. Okay, so number one's not gonna change your life, but it's really cool just to show people that you know it's there, right? So here we go. The Apple icon up here, you wanna click on that, go to System Settings right here. It's gonna bring up your System Settings. Click on Control Center right there, you can see it. And then down here, you, what you wanna do is go down to Music Recognition. So you can either turn this on in the Menu Bar or the Control Center. I, I like it in the Control Center, but I'm just gonna show you in the Menu Bar because it's easier to show you. So watch what happens. Look at my screen up here, see up here? Now watch when I click this, we'll keep your eye up there. It's gonna go ahead and add a little icon. See that icon up there? I'll, I'll toggle it on and off. This is the Shazam icon. It's basically built into the Mac. So if I click on this, look what happens. Music recognition. So you can start listening. It's gonna show the ones that you've listened to before, right? So obviously if you bring up something like a YouTube video or something, I mean, this is not that, that useful for this kind of stuff, but I'm just gonna show you really quickly here. I can't really play this noise. So I'm just gonna show you the process. I don't wanna get uh, copyright striked, but here it goes. This is YouTube one. So if I start playing this, what I can do, is I'm just gonna go up, actually now it's an ad right here, so I'm gonna close this. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. But what you wanna do is you can go up to here, now watch what happens. I'm gonna hit click on start listening. And there you go. So I clicked on start listening. You saw it pop in there. It said U21. It took a couple seconds. You can see it there. But now it's in my list here. You can go ahead and you can, you know, find the music, you can delete it, you know, all that kind of stuff. It tells you when you actually search for it. It's going to give you a whole list of the music that you found in there. But you can see that it found U21 right there. There it is right there. So I just didn't want to get a copyright strike. You get the idea though. It's not so much useful for this, right? But what it is useful for is let's say you're listening to some kind of a podcast and they're playing background music or something where you just hear a song in the background or your TV or I mean it can be anything right and then this thing can listen in and tell you exactly what song's playing which is kind of cool of course you can download this separately but I'm guessing you didn't know it was built into the Mac all right, number two is actually useful for a couple use cases. Now, I know there's some stuff like this online that you can do for free, but listen to me for a second. Let's say you have Wi-Fi and you wanna go ahead and test for dead spots all around your house. This is a really useful tool. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Up here, you wanna click on Spotlight and then you wanna type in Terminal, right? So Terminal and then open up Terminal. So once we did that, let me go ahead and just open this. I'm gonna make this screen just a little bit bigger so you can see it. So now we're in Terminal and what you wanna do is you wanna type in Network quality, just like that, all one word, no spaces, and then just click enter. Now watch what happens, keep your eye over here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna start testing my download speed and my upload speed right here. 258, 260, uh, uplink is like 14 or 15. You can see this and it's gonna give you some other things. So what it's doing though is while you're actually testing, see how long this is going, give it a second, you can walk around your house, different areas of your house. I'm not on a laptop, but if I was, you walk around and you can see this thing drop or go way up depending on where you are. You can test and see where the dead spot's in your house. It's gonna run, you can see how long it ran. It ran for like 15 seconds or something. Then it's gonna give you some information as far as, I guess my response and this is low. <laughs> My latency is not the best either, but you get the idea. It's gonna give you some information at the end of it. But overall, what I use this for is I walk around with my laptop and, and I think there's a dead spot. It'll tell you really, you know, because it'll be low. Let's say you walk 10 feet this way, it goes way up and you can kind of walk around with your laptop. I just like this. Plus it's a pure test. It's not going through a third party where you can't always trust it and stuff. So overall, I think it's just something cool built into it that not many people know about. All right, number three is actually a more serious one. So you can actually set up a legacy contact on your Mac. What is that? If you were to pass away, let's say, and you wanted people to have a, like your kids and stuff to have all your availability to your pictures and some of your documents and stuff, you can do that and it's a safe way to do it. So let me just show you what I'm talking about just so people don't lose like all those photos. Let's say, you know, they couldn't get back into the computer, it would be gone, right? So this is a way you can set this up so people can have access to that when they need it later. So let's just take a look. You go up to your Apple icon, you click on system settings right here. Let's go ahead and do that. So what you wanna do first of all is you click on your Apple ID right here, right there, and it's gonna bring up this, and then you sign in and uh, sign in and security. See that link? Click on that link right there. It's gonna bring up all this stuff. Right down here is legacy contact. A legacy contact is someone that you trust to have access to the data in your account after your death. 
So you can set this up. You can click on it, and it's going to it's going to have you set this up, and it's going to send them a code um, that they have to keep basically. And it's you know you you have to you know there's a couple of different ways. I'll get into it in a second, but you basically have to set it up, and then that goes off to the you know to that person, and you tell them about it. Obviously, that it's coming. So that's the first part. But what actually is this? Like, what does it do? So it says how to add legacy contact and all this stuff. A legacy contact is someone you choose to have access to your data after. Your, of your Apple account after your death. So it basically it has to be Mac OS 12.1 or newer. You can add the legacy contact at that point. It says the, the data that they're gonna be able to get once they do this is the data may include photos, messages, notes, files, apps that you've downloaded, device backups, and more. But certain information like movies, music, books, and subscriptions you purchased with your Apple ID and uh, and stored in your keychain, like you know, other stuff you stored in your keychain, like payment information, passcodes, and pass keys, they can't be accessed by your legacy contact. But your photos, messages, notes, files, stuff like that can be. So it kind of separates those two things. Plus, it doesn't want to give them your movies, which is crazy, right? You get the idea. So basically, it says down here, to file an access request after, the, after you pass away, the person that you give this to will need the access key that you generate when you choose them as the contact and your death certificate. So long story short is when you set up the legacy contact, it sends them this basically access key. They need that access key. Plus they need to show a copy of your death certificate. What Apple does basically, it says for up to, I think it said for up to three years, it'll actually um, go ahead and give them access this way. And it'll basically disable your main login to your computer, like your main Apple ID, but it'll give them access to access all this other data where they can grab all the data out. I believe it said it's up to three years and then after three years, everything's gone. So you have like three years to get everything out. And after that, you're, you're, you know, you're out of luck, basically. So they have to remove everything and move it to their own account. Long story short, you guys can read all about this. Um, I'll have a link to it in the description. I just thought it was kind of a cool feature built into the Mac for people that are worried about this. And they don't want people to have access now. But later in life, after you die with a death, death certificate, they can actually get in there and get all your information. All right, number four is something that I use a lot because I don't like, you can obviously encrypt stuff, and then, but I end up forgetting the passwords and I end up not being able to get back into it. But if I just want to remind myself, do not mess with a file, don't delete a file or change a file. I can do that a certain way in a Mac. So here's downloads, my download files. All you have to do is, let's just say there's a file in here. I'm going to say use this one here. See that little file? It's a JPEG. You right click on it and then you click get info right there. So get info. It's going to open up this window over here. I'll move this over so you can see it. This is the get info window. In here, you can see there's a lock button right there or like a little check mark so click locked now watch what happens so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep that over there I'll actually shut that down so it's locked now so what happens is, you know I can open this file up right let me just do that it's not gonna it's not locked in the sense that you can't open it up but it's locked in the sense that now I can if I try to delete it it'll still let me but watch what happens it gives me another message it says this is locked do you want to remove, remove do you want to move it to the trash anyway it says right there so I'm gonna hit stop. So it reminds me not to delete that file, all right? That's number one. It doesn't, it still allows you to do it, but it gives you that safety check. Hey, what are you doing with this file? You shouldn't be deleting this. I like that actually. The other thing you can do really kind of cool is if you just have this file, since it's locked, and let's say I go in here and let me just open this up. Let's just say I, I click on a pen and I start drawing on it like this, right? As soon as I do that, look at this. It's gonna say right here, this file uh, is locked. So it says you can either unlock it, you can duplicate the file, keep the original copy and make a new copy, or I can cancel. So it, it warns me not to change the file. Now if I try, if I just click cancel, watch what happens, that goes away. It won't let me do anything. If I say unlock it, it'll let me obviously write over it. So it gives you that kind of, you know, I guess it's just a safety catch in there if you have important files so that if you're going through stuff that you just, you know, let's say you're deleting a whole bunch of files and there's a couple in there that you never just want to delete it, you're gonna get that message and it's gonna warn you. I think it's just a great way built into a Mac without worrying about passwords and everything. Obviously it doesn't password protect it, but it's the next best thing. All right, so here's a tip that's kind of useful. A lot of people just don't know this is available on a Mac. So let's just assume that you have, let's go here, let's open up Finder down here. So we have Finder window, you can see it in here. I'm gonna go to the downloads or something. But see up here in your menu bar, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can all see it. So up here in the menu bar, a lot of people don't know you can put stuff up here, which means basically you can go ahead, let's say you had an important folder over here, like important files. I can actually take this, but you have to, what, the, the key is here is you have to hold the command key down. So hold the command key. Take a, take a folder like this, I can drag it over here and just drop it into the bar up here, see that? So this is now in my downloads, well, it's, it's everywhere, watch what happens. So if I go back down here and I open up Finder again, it stays up in the Finder window, see it up there? So now it's gonna be in your Finder window at all times, so now if I click on this folder, 
it's opening up the folder over here. So it's it's kind of quick access to that folder, which is really cool. So if you use that folder a lot, you can just you can actually you have to hit hold down the command key, but you can drag in folders from wherever you want and put them up in the menu bar up here of your finder window, which is really crazy. If you want to get rid of it, you, you can't just drag it off. You have to hold the command key down again and then drag down, let go. It'll come off like that. You can do this with files, obviously, but you have to hold the command key down and drop a file up here. You can see the files up there now. And then to remove it, hold the command key and drop it down. So that's kind of useful. But even more useful, let's say you're in the Finder just a ton. You can even take apps and stuff. So here's an app numbers down here. I hold the command key down. I drag it up. Let go. Now I actually can click on apps and stuff inside the Finder window. I can put apps up here if I use them a lot, if I want to get rid of them like that. I just find it useful for the important files, um, things that you use a ton. Obviously, you can add it over here. I understand all that. But it's e easier for like the things that I do the most, even like my downloads folder. A lot of times I'll just drag that over here because I, I, it's just something where it's easier to access than sometimes searching for it. It's a little box over here. So I just think it's kind of an interesting thing. A lot of people just do not know it exists at all. And I just thought I would share that. This next one's useful for a lot of reasons. Now you have to be using Safari for this. And let's say your mind wanders when you're doing a search, you're doing some research, but then you get kind of sidetracked. Let me show you what I mean. Here we are on Google in Safari, and I typed in top GDP of countries. So you're looking for like the top, you know, the richest countries and stuff. So we do that in the search and we click on this. So, you know, it lists all this information. We're kind of looking in here, we're, we're scrolling down. We go to here, Webikedia, we click on this, and we just get sidetracked all of a sudden. We're kind of in here, and we're looking at all the different countries, and uh, we click on the United States. And then we click on, you know, let's just say something else here. We, something else gets our eye, Germany. So we're really deep into here. But that search that we did in Google was like one of the best searches ever. And it gave us all the information. I saw some other things I wanted to search out, but I forget what I searched for. Instead of going back and looking for that, all you have to do is you go up to here to history right here. And then just go to return to search results. Watch that. What it's going to do is it's going to move you right back to Google. It's going to give you your last search that you actually did in Google, so you, so obviously you don't have to kind of think of what it was. It's going to bring you right back to Google. So when you get really, really deep in there, you can just use that technique, and it's going to bring you right back, and it's super, super easy. I thought it was kind of cool. This next one's just kind of a quick shortcut you can use if you're if you're emailing somebody on your Mac and you want to give them some information like driving directions or like a contact page on a website or a menu or something. But I'll show you some differences here. So look at my screen. Here's the email over here. I'm typing it up. Here's ESPN. Let's just say I'm talking about some football game and I wanted to show my friend about this article. Instead of clicking on it and then copying the link, you just all you have to do is just take the link and drag it over like this. Now watch what happens. A lot of times it's going to go ahead and create this little link here. It's going to give you the information on the link. But you can do a lot of stuff with it over here with this little drop-down box. You can show link and preview like this. It's going to show like a little, you know, obviously like a picture of the article in there as well. Or you can click on it again and you can just say convert to plain link. So you can see that it's going to give you a plain link there. So obviously you can kind of scroll down. So it's going to give the link just, but any of these, I mean anything. It can be even like graphics and stuff, Wild Wings. But I'm just going to take like this one over here. You can drag that in. Really easy, right? And it's going to give you the link right there. This one, again, it tells you the the information, but if you want the link, you can just go ahead and show link preview. It's going to give you the actual link there. It does, let me just convert it to plain link there. So you get the idea. So that's how that works in there. The other thing that's kind of interesting is let's say you're working on an article. Let's say it's a pages article like this, and I actually have this saved already. And without even like finding the file and putting it in here, if I want to email it to somebody, all I have to do is go up to the menu bar up here on, let's, I'm in pages. See this is where it actually gives you the name of the file? You can grab it right here and just drop it like this right in. Obviously, I dropped it into the wrong spot because I didn't enter, but you get the idea. You know, let me do that again. Just grab it up here and you can drop it right in there. It's going to, you know, send that to the person that you're actually wanting to email. So you can take any website drop any of that stuff in, drop graphics in, drop your files in this way into the email directly without having to copy the link over. Again, it's a small thing, but a ton of people don't even know that exists. I know a lot of people do know this one, but I'm guessing there's some that don't. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. I hope this helps. Again, they're not like life-changing or anything like that, right? And I'm guessing you know probably half of these at least, but I'm guessing there's a few you didn't know as well. So I like to do these videos from time to time because most of my channel is about doing technical reviews and I do the Apple News and I do all the different stories, product reviews, showcases, all technology related, especially Apple. But this is different. It's more of a teaching time for me and I love it. So anyways, subscribe if you can. Watch, Go to my channel. Look at all the different videos. I have like 700 of them, all Apple, basically Apple related, um, of all different types, plus a lot of technology like monitors and keyboards. And we'll talk to you in the next one. I appreciate you guys for sure watching all my videos, and we'll see you soon. Peace.